Hey everybody! This week we're going to talk about one of my favorite Bible stories. We're going to talk about the story of Ruth. Who has heard that story before? Probably not very many of you. It's in the Old Testament. Um, and I had a verse from the story read at my wedding. It's one of my favorites. And then we're going to make a bookmark that we can use in our Bibles or any book we're reading that will help us remember this story and about the wheat that Ruth, the wheat and barley Ruth had to collect in the story. So go ahead and listen to the story. This story is found in the Old Testament of the Bible in the book called Ruth. There was a famine in Israel and the food was all gone. Elimelech took his wife Naomi and their two sons to live in the country of Moab. The family lived there for ten years and both their sons married girls from Moab. It was a sad day for Naomi when her husband and both her sons got very sick and died. Naomi loved her son's wives, Oprah and Ruth. Stay here with your own people and your God, she said. You will find new husbands, but I must go back home to my own country. So Oprah went back to her own people, but Ruth would not leave Naomi. I am going wherever you go, she said. I will worship your God and be part of your family. Ruth left her own country and her family because she loved Naomi and she loved God. It was barely harvest time when Ruth and Naomi got back to Bethlehem. Ruth worked in the fields belonging to Boaz, her dead husband's uncle. Boaz told his workers to drop plenty of stalks of barley for Ruth to pick up. Ruth showed all the barley to Naomi. God has looked after us today, Naomi said. Boaz has been very kind to you. They thank God for looking after them. So this is one of my absolute favorite stories. Why do you think Ruth wouldn't go home to where her people, her blood family lived, and she wanted to stay with Naomi? Well, she loved her. She'd lived with her for a, a while now. And she was alone. You never ever want to leave someone alone, do you? You always want to have company, usually. And you want to be able to show love to those other people. So Ruth stayed with Naomi because she loved her. And she didn't want her to be alone. And it's important for us to remember that we can help people who feel lonely, too. We can give someone who doesn't have any friends at lunch someone to talk to and all sorts of things like that at school every day can't we so we can be like Ruth too and really help some people that are around us so I want you this week to think about how you can help someone who maybe is lonely maybe doesn't have someone to talk to and try to help them and spend some time with them and be with them and if you want to you can even pray with them so let's go ahead and work on the craft. Craft, you're gonna want a piece of thick paper like cardstock, a ruler, a marker, a pair of scissors, a pen, and some brown or yellow or a color like that. A color that reminds you of wheat or barley, of yarn, ribbon, or string. If you have a hole puncher, it would also be really helpful. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to fold your cardstock in half. And then you're going to fold it in half again. So, how many sections am I going to have in my cardstock when I unfold it? For all your math brains out there. How many do you think I'm going to have? So right, I have four. I have one, two, three, four. These are fourths. So then once I have my fourths, I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut the last fourth off. And I'm going to make it as straight as possible. And that is going to be my bookmark. Once I have done that, I'm going to make my barley on my bookmark. So I'm going to draw the stem of my barley. It's a nice, big, thick, straight line. And then I'm going to take my ruler. 
I want to make a mark at the end of my stock. And then I want to make a mark two centimeters in the other direction. And then I want to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to make it two centimeters up. Then we're going to go from your first dot and we're going to go two centimeters up from there. And then we're going to go two centimeters out from there and two out in the other direction. And you're going to keep doing this process to make the middle dot and then two in either direction all two centimeters apart until you run out of room on your bookmark. So as many as you can fit. This is going to be all the different pieces of barley or wheat that we're going to show. And then when you start to run out of room, I want you to make sure you have a nice one that is on the top by itself, like this. So once you've done that, I want you to either hole punch every one of these dots or take a pen and go through and poke it all the way through every one of these dots. It'll be easier if you have a hole puncher, but I do not have a hole puncher at my house. So I'm going to use this pen. So go ahead and do that for every single one of the dots you drew. So once you've done that, once you've punched all the holes on the dots, I want you to get a really long piece of yarn that's like four or five feet long or so. Plenty long and you're going to cut it. And then at one end, you're going to tie a knot. And you want to make sure it's a big knot. You might have to tie it a couple times because we want to make sure it doesn't fit through the hole on your paper. We're also going to tie it off so if it slides through the hole at first, it's okay. And then you're going to take your other end, and this is a trick. You don't have to do that. Do this. If you have a piece of tape, if you wrap the piece of tape around your other end of yarn, it'll make it easier to put through the holes on your bookmark. It just makes it a little more pointed and a little more uniform on the edge. So I want you to cut yourself a piece of string that's probably about three feet long. And on one end of the string, I want you to tie a knot. You wanna make sure it's a pretty big knot. You might have to go tie it two or three times to make it a pretty big knot. And then you're going to take one end of your string and you're going to slide it through the opening. I put some tape on the end of my string to make it a little easier to push through the holes. And then I'm going to slide it into one of those holes that you drew that was two centimeters away. And then I'm going to take my end again, put it back through the original opening. Be careful not to push that knot out. We're going to take care of that in just a second. And then you're going to put it through that opening again. And do you see how it got a little bit bigger? Now I have two what we would call stitches stretching across those holes. And then I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to take my knot and I'm going to tie it to my string now. And then we don't have to worry about it coming out. So it's nice and tight. And I'm going to go ahead and do three stitches on that first one to make it a nice thick healthy piece of wheat. If it gets caught on the bottom just untangle it and I'm going to go through that first hole again but instead of going to that one now I'm going to go to the other side and I'm going to do three stitches there. So there was one, two, three. And then once I've done those three, I'm going to go to the one that was a little bit further up. I'm going to put it through that middle hole and I'm going to do the same thing again, but with one, one, two, three, 
two. Three. And I'm going to keep doing that until I get to the very, very top. And I'll show you what to do then. So here's what I have so far. Once I get up to the very top, so I've gone all the way up, going in both directions, I'm going to put my string through that very top hole that you made last. And then I'm going to stretch all the way down to the bottom and put it in that very first hole. And then you can see how it's making a little wheat barley stock. And then I'm going to put it in the last one and back into the first one. One more time. And I'm going to pull it tight and then I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to take my string, I'm going to tuck it into any loop I see, pull it through, and tie a knot. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut it off. So this is what my bookmark looks like. And I can use this to mark a page in my Bible or a book I'm reading. And I'm going to finish it off with one last thing. I'm going to finish it off with a Bible verse from the story. The verse I'm going to write is where... You go, I will go. And that is Ruth one sixteen.